doing our series on invasive species. Today we're here in Bio Chico to look at what we would call an early detection rapid response species, EDRR, giant salvinia, salvinia molesta. Well, we're going to start the program by defining what an invasive is. And by standards at the University of Florida IFAS, we have three checkpoints that we call for an invasive species. Number one, it's got to be a non-native species. Anything native to the area, we wouldn't necessarily, it could be a nuisance or another term, but we wouldn't use the term invasive for that. Uh, if it is non-native, it had to have gotten here by human beings. Either we brought it here intentionally or accidentally, but it could not have or did not naturally occur here without our assistance. So if that is the case, that's strike two. Strike three is it's causing a problem. A problem could be environmental, such as this Chinese tallow that is growing right here. Uh, that will outcompete a lot of native species. It's got some toxic properties to it, so wildlife won't use it. Uh, cattle won't graze on this kind of thing. And beyond that, you will see some tall cane, which we call Phragmites. Uh, actually, the Longleaf Alliance is currently working on removing that right now from this boat ramp. Uh, honestly, though, this particular variety of Phragmites is naturalized, so we would not necessarily call that one an invasive species, but it's definitely a nuisance, and people do want to try to manage this. Salvinia, no doubt. It meets all three criteria. It is a problem plant, and we're going to learn more about that today in this video. Thanks for joining us. Typically, uh, what I see with giant Salvinia is it loves uh, shallower, more uh, quiet, you know, sedentary water, a place where it's not uh, bothered a whole lot. Uh, it doesn't do very well in, uh, you know, fast moving water. Uh, and it likes shallower places. Where I typically find it first, uh, you know, is in inside a vegetated area where it has a, an open spot to fill in, it'll do it. Uh, and then of course, as it runs out of room, it expands and gets deeper and deeper. It loves little pockets, open areas like that. Giant Salvinia does uh, grow and reproduce from fragmentation. So anytime that it's chopped, cut, that piece that breaks off uh, is able to then grow. Hello everyone, my name is Samantha Bolduck. I'm with Escambia County Natural Resources Management Department. And as you can see behind me, we are currently in Bayou Chico and we are chock full of Salvinia. So giant Salvinia is originally from South America. It's normally found in southeastern Brazil, northern Argentina, and it loves these freshwater, stagnant water bodies. So not a lot of movement, lots of nutrients, really great growing area. And as you can see, it almost looks like duckweed. It's got these two leaves that float on the surface of the water. And as it gets thicker and thicker, those leaves will start to curl up and do a dense mat. And given enough time, the salvinia will actually cover the entire surface of the water as it's starting to here behind me. So when it forms these dense mats, it can create real problems for the water body. It can shade out native vegetation underneath it. It can use up all the dissolved oxygen, which can lead to fish kills and other die-offs. And it really reduces the biodiversity of our waterways. In thick enough mats, it can also cause problems for navigation and infrastructure like stormwater. Hi, I'm Jamie Marler with Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, uh, Invasive Plant Management. And we're out here today on Bayou Chico to talk a little bit about how we manage and control uh, giant salvinia. We use a multi-prong uh, approach using uh, herbicide treatments as well as uh, biocontrol with uh, salvinia weevil. Well, salvinia weevil has, has been authorized for release in the U.S. So, okay. right. uh, yeah, it's been uh, studied and, and approved for release. So uh, we are seeing some, some results with it. It's fairly new for us. We actually uh, have only found giant salvinia on uh, five water bodies. We've had uh, two water bodies in central Florida that uh, giant salvinia was found and uh, we um, were able to go in and uh, be very effective in controlling it. From last update I've gotten, um, they're looking really well. So we have been working in uh, Bayou Chico for the last uh, year and a half. Basically stable, increasing, decreasing? I, I want to say that uh, 
I'm gonna go more with stable, okay. but I've seen some decrease from, from my viewpoint. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, something that will, over time, uh, we'll see results. I don't think it'll happen quickly, but it'll, it'll happen. So the uh, herbicide that we use, uh, they're very selective uh, herbicide. We use uh, a contact herbicide as well as a systemic herbicide uh, that's taken up by the plant's roots. When we treat, uh, typically uh, we have to keep in mind uh, different factors, of course. Uh, we don't want to treat too much of an area that uh, affect uh, on the uh, gonna have surrounding plant life or animals. Uh, and then we usually try to treat a uh, tenth of an acre um, at a time and uh, let that fall out and then retreat. But we'll be doing uh, continued treatments, uh, you know, over months. Normal salvinia, mm -hmm. these hairs just kind of go out and they're a little, got a little curve to them, but on the giant salvinia, they'll come out and be in like an egg beater shape. And I think so they, they mentioning when we go back on, online, uh, we do have the normal native one here. Correct. Yeah, oh, so wow. People should know that, that there are. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I've got two samples of giant salvinia right here in my hands. So we've got a younger, less mature version. So you can see it's got these two round leaves, and then it's also got this modified third leaf, which hangs below the surface of the water, kind of acts like a root. And then in this hand, we've got a more mature version. So you can see as the salvinia gets larger and it gets denser in the waterway, these leaves actually start to fold up on each other to form like this almost lettuce looking leaf structure. And it's probably hard to see on camera, but if you look real close, all these leaves have these small hair structures. So one of the ways we identify giant salvinia from normal salvinia is these hairs actually form an egg beater shape on the leaf surface. Well, uh, we, we certainly uh, feel like we could always do better, yeah. but we, uh, you know, giant salvinia is, uh, it's a formidable opponent for sure, yeah. but I think we're doing a pretty good job. I'm happy with the results so far. That's the benefit of the uh, selective herbicides is we're able to uh, spray a particular uh, plant and not affect the others. Now, you'll have some, you know, a little bit of browning and burn back sometimes, but it doesn't uh, harm the plant over the long term. They, they, they recover pretty well. And I do think that because of the type of uh, water body we're dealing with, with it being tidal, probably kept it from doing more, yeah. you know, expanding more than it did. Yeah. It has to have some effect on it, uh, trying to establish itself. All right, Jamie gave us some info on how FWC has managed this thing. You see here, we got lots of homeowners that live along Bio Chico. Is there anything that the homeowners can do to help battle this invasive plant as well? And the quick answer is obviously yes, there's things you can do. As this plant starts to drift out of this uh, run heading into the open bayou, it'll drift past your dock or your seawall. And if you see these little isolated patches, you can just take a net, a swimming pool net, a crab net, something like that, pick up that piece and then put it in your yard or I would recommend a concrete pad, a sidewalk, something like that and let it dry out and desiccate right there. You need to be aware that it is illegal to transport or move live invasive plants off site. So, uh, and for obvious reasons, we don't want to, as they say, spread the love. But we're gonna do everything we can to avoid that. So by putting it on your sidewalk or a patio in the backyard and letting it dry and desiccate out and then bag that or possibly even double bag that and trashing it, uh, that will help try to main or keep it from spreading anywhere else. Theoretically, this is a freshwater plant. We don't believe it will survive in Pensacola Bay, but we're getting some research now that it may have a higher tolerance for salt water than we thought. So motoring through here, if you pick it up somehow, some way on your boat, and visit another bio or an open body of water, you may be transporting it un unbeknownst to you. And keep that in mind, certainly if your trailer in your boat, say at Mahogany Mill or one of the other boat ramps here in the, in the bio, that when you get it up on the trailer, check the trailer, take the tires, the hubs, the outboard motor itself, every part of that thing to see if Salvinia is on the vessel itself. Uh, and then please clean that off. 
uh, make sure you clean that vessel before you move to another body of water. And many of you guys are living in bios right now that have not been infested with this stuff but we want to have an all eyes all hands on deck with this thing to keep it from spreading anywhere else in our county so now that you've seen what it looks like and uh, how uh, please contact uh escambia county division of uh, uh, land management and water quality or the division of marine resources to let them know you have found it we can come out and verify it record that on ed maps and contact jamie and so that they know we're spreading. But our goal is to keep this thing from spreading anywhere else in our county. If you have any further questions, you can contact the Escambia County Division of Water Quality and Land Management, the Escambia County Division of Marine Resources, or your Escambia County Extension Office.